Because we were in a corner. When we did production in Punta Gorda, yours and my booth were right courtside. And during timeouts, the Johnsons, if it wasn't going their way and they burned that timeout, they were very, speaking very freely to each other about what they think needs to be done. <laughs> and and it for was, lack of a better term. It was actually this matchup. Yes, it was. Where it was. Farius and Silstrom saved match points and then came back and won games two and three. Well, let's see what is in store here as we are underway. <laughs> oh, man, that big boy has some great but hands. that's what I'm talking about, right? He didn't even swing, and that ball's coming off harder than 99% of the people. Yeah, that's the spot there from Yates. Silson's not going to be able to catch up to that one with the backhand, and Farris kind of overextended. On off the tape, winner there for Joey Farius. He'll take it. Farius just tried to carve that one up and over the net. Can get as much carry as what he needed. Yates, Yates was running off the court right there, so Hunter didn't take out his left butt cheek. Silstrom just kind of not following through on that, kind of jam, not jamming himself up, but stopping it. Yeah, swing. just knifed it a little bit. Oh, what a spot from Silstrom. But the big thing there is Farius just took a step back, allowed Silstrom to step in front and rip that ball back behind Hunter. Not sure what happened right there. The referee's microphone's off, so we couldn't hear that call. Look at the big boy step in right there. Does Silstrom. And again, it's on his backhand side. He didn't even have to move his feet. Nope. And he had 12 feet of reach right there. Well, and that's one thing. We've spoken to Farius about it before, right? He is very comfortable allowing Silstrom to reach in with that backhand. Silstrom getting a little excited on that drive. Coming up underneath it a little too much. Wasn't able to bring that back down in the end of the court. I'm... The Johnson brothers getting a little payback from Farius' ball off the tape and in earlier. Big serve there from Hunter Johnson. A couple of service return mistakes from Silstrom. See a little switch now. Hunter's staying on the right, Yates on the left. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Oh, and Yates wanted to call it out, but he couldn't, and the ball dots the line right there. Great around the post here from Joey Ferry. Yeah, the key to this one is is the patience, right? That Joey just allows it to develop, get around the post. Wow. I mean, talk about shape that Silstrom puts on that ball right there. With that reach in, his wrists are so strong. That's the advantage of 6'9", right? He's reaching in taking that ball where most people are kind of 
getting it at the court. Oh, what a ball there from Joey Ferguson. We've seen that, Chet, for years and years. You and I have known Joey for 8 to 10 years now almost, and we've seen that shot before. He had gone away from the game for a couple years. He is back, and that shot is back as well. Well, I think with, with Joey as well, he's had some back issues. So I think that not so much stepping away from the game, but, but not playing as many tournaments, it kinda, it's, it's allowed him to get a little bit healthier. Oh, he read He read it. He's, <laughs> you watch him walking back. He is talking to his paddle because he had no one else to talk to about how bad he knew that shot was because he was sitting on it. That was great. Yeah, yeah that ball looked just out as well. Farris is definitely reading the ball as well, but catching that one a little late is... So only just missed by an inch or so. And a good leave there from Farias on the flip side. Three, four, two. Side out. Yates visibly frustrated with himself on that drive. He relies heavily on that that shape that he creates with the top spin. Ooh, got a little lucky. Ball rolls off the top of the tape with a ton of top spin, and this takes off out of bounds. Silstrom just can't get on top of that enough there, Chad. Yeah, he got caught very flat-footed right there. He's not typically not somebody that, that plays up on his toes as much, but there, just really back on the heel, so got jammed up. Yeah, good spot from Hunter going down the line to Farris's backhand. I don't like that speed up from Silstrom. No, good hands from him to try and stay in it, but yeah, you're right, Chad. Not the right time to go speed up from such a low position. That ball just slid on the line. So Yates looked down at that line as soon as he'd hit that ball into the net. Can't have easy points like that there from Farias. Oh, Johnson was sitting all over that one as well. Farias, I think, got away with one, but... Johnson Brothers now taking a two-point lead, up 6-4. Wow, nice move there from Andre Silstrom as he comes across, reads Joey Farias' drive so well and able to finish with the backhand. I mean, honestly, that's that's something that they need to duplicate right there. Farris just goes to drive right down the middle of the court. Silstrom's sitting there, and he's going to cover three quarters of it from where he is in that in the middle of the court. Ball goes a little long there, and we are now all tied up at six. Here in game number one, winner moves on to the semifinals. Yeah, good spot there from Yates, but 
middle of that point, I don't know how Silstrom got a paddle on that backhand. Wow, a little confusion in the middle right there. I think Silstrom wanted to finish it because he had started it. But they go a little long here, and Hunter and E.H. Johnson take a one-point lead. Change his mind right there, Chad? Yeah, the movement of Yates sliding to his right to cover the line. It kind of made Joey change his mind and try to go back cross court. A good drive from Hunter Johnson with a little bit of help from the net. Now, this is the, the power that I was anticipating from Johnson's, uh, especially on, the, on that third shot drive. So we get a timeout here from Farius and Silstrom. Good timeout here, down by three, right? want to try and stop that momentum. Game's not over yet. If anyone can stop them and roll off three in a row to tie this up. But again, what's been the difference maker as it was 6-6, six, six, Chad? Yeah, Yates and, and Hunter have really stepped it up as far as speeding up balls, hitting quality speed ups as well. The The difficulty with the ball that they give you is it's so heavy with so much top spin. It's got that big shape to it we talked about before. So right now, let's take a look at a Yates Johnson cameo here at the 2020. I'm Yates Johnson, I'm a professional pickleball player, and I'm from Taos, New Mexico. Ever since I was little, ever since we could walk, we had a rack in our hand. So that's kind of how we got started in tennis. We've always dreamt of being professional tennis players. I'd say, you know, having a racket in your hand for 20 years with tennis um, makes the transition to pickleball definitely a lot easier than most. Um, but it definitely took a little time to get used to the different strategy and the different feel. And at first we thought, no way, like we're not going to give up on our dream. We want to compete for Grand Slams. But we, we saw how fast of a sport pickleball was growing. It's kind of the opportunity we could be as like the pioneers of the sport. It's a lot of fun and there's a reason why it's the number one growing sport in the country. I mean, I'd say there's really no ceiling. I mean, it could, it could be in the Olympics one day and that's really exciting. Goals for the 2023 season would probably be get my first gold, but also get our first medal in doubles and, and see where that takes us. As we come back from that piece, it is a three-point lead for Hunter and Yates Johnson. And again, another point there off the paddle of Hunter Johnson, and they are one point away from moving on to a second game. Oh, and a little split action there from Yates Johnson, but oh, and Hunter Johnson getting out of the way of that flick backhand from Silstrom. But Yates and Hunter Johnson take game number one pretty handily after it was tied 6 6. They go on a 5 0 run to end it. And we will see what answers that Silstrom and Farius have in the game number two.
for just a little bit more, I can get you unlimited minutes, data, and text. Six hotspots, concert coupons, cable subscription, dental cleanings. Do we need all that? Do we need all that? I wouldn't think so. You should use Consumer Cellular. They have everything you need, nothing you don't. I'll throw in this tiny little fan. Car wash voucher. <laughs> Light up soap dispenser. I think you lost. Get the exact same coverage as the nation's leading carriers. All the talk, text, and data you need starting at $20. Consumer Cellular. The 2023 APP Daytona Beach Open is sponsored by Franklin, USA Pickleball, Penguin, and Sun Met. And back here on Championship Court, game number two about to get underway. Silstrom and Farius looking to answer the Johnson brothers after going down 11-6 in game number one. Silstrom to serve. Well, I like that trigger pull there from Yates. But he just came in a little flat, didn't quite get the paddle head underneath it. That's a nice ball there from Silstrom. He did not overpower it. I was right? just about just to say, a little it's, easy such a, it's such a casual reach in and flick right there. I don't think it doesn't translate how good his reach in is with his height. Oh, come no, no, on. No, he didn't. Look at the hands, come Chad. Come on. The hands of this guy. Absolutely amazing. What a ball by Andreas Silstrom. I mean, he was... Dead to rights right there, but somehow gets a paddle on it. Yates is rolling around on the court trying to get there. Yeah, ball's in. Hunter trying to get out of the way of it, but excellent job of the counterattack from Farius. He thought it was hit a lot harder. And a timeout quickly here. Uh, Chad, we're a minute and 30 in. It's a 4-0 lead for Silstrom and Farius. What adjustment was made for them from game one to game two? They came out in game one, and they were the aggressors, right? They took it to the Johnsons. They kind of allowed the Johnson brothers to assert their power back into it. Now we're seeing it in game two. They're the ones that are speeding it up. They're the ones that are looking at setting the pace. And it's, it's a lot of what we're seeing as far as the, the, the progression in the men's game, right? It's, it's whoever pulls that trigger first and starts the battle where, you know, let's say four or five years ago it was the, the motto of whoever starts the firefight is going to lose. Right. Now you have to start that firefight because you're an anticipating those balls to be coming back quickly. So as we come back in from timeout, a 4-0 lead here for Silstrom and Farius early on in game number two. It'll be Silstrom to serve on second server. Yeah, it's a good move from Yates right there. Kind of cross-court Ernie. That's great ball there from 
Yates Johnson on the forehand drive. And the Johnsons are on the board. That was a perfect shot of the shape that, that Yates is able to, to create. Wow, Jiminy Christmas. what a ball down the middle there from Silstrom. I, th I thought he hit the backhand hard, right? He hits that backhand harder than most people hit their forehand overhead. And then that thing was waist high. Now, granted, his waist high is like five foot seven. <laughs> True. <laughs> but that ball was waist high, and he hit an absolute laser through the middle of the court. Good leave there from Farias as Yates Johnson can't get on top of that one. And a side out here to Silstrom and Farias up by three. Game number two trying to force a third game here in this quarterfinal matchup. I was just about to, I was about to say, right, so Yates was setting up that speed up. He runs around the backhand, hits the inside out forehand back cross court, so then when he gets that same ball, he can speed it up. Big finish there from Yates Johnson, and they get a quick side out. But going back to that previous point, if Yates doesn't set it up with the cross court dink first, Silstrom would have been sitting all over that first speed up. Unfortunate there from Farias. The ball tips off the tape, goes up and over his left shoulder. He can't get a paddle on it. Joey tries to go dink ATP right there. That was the only option he had with the cross court Ernie from Yates. Oh, he only missed it by a couple of inches right there, too. Just had to hit it a little bit firmer, and he had it. Even the block volley from Silstrom right there is, has a ton of pace on it. Wow. Silstrom looking over. Yates sold it well. We might be able to see from this angle. I mean from, from here it looked like it was it was on the line. All tied up here now at four. Good answer here from the Johnson brothers. Nice hands from Joey Farias reading that ball in the middle. And that's a tough ball because he has to protect the line as that ball is on the sideline, able what, to adjust. Yeah, good good job there. But what helped him is that Yates was coming down the sideline himself. So both Johnson brothers were split there. Good spot from Yates. Farris just kind of hitting a medium pace ball right around chest high. And a good block volley there from Hunter Johnson down on the feet of Farris. I think he was going to speed that one up and change his mind. And nice job blocking that ball down the line by Silstrom. Ball, ball never came yeah, up. Never came up. <laughs> that ball just sat down. Heavy that, spin. Right, and that's the heavy top spin by Joey Farias. Keep that ball down. No. 
So we saw Hunter Johnson asking if he was the right receiver there. Wilson going for the big serve, but missing that by about six inches. That's not the ball speed up there by Silstrom. I don't care how much topspin you get on that. That ball is only six inches off the ground. To try and speed that up and keep it in is tough. This is the danger zone for Farius and Silstrom. Almost identical situation to game two. The Johnson brothers are now dictating the pace of the game. Wow, good hands there from Silstrom. That ball just surprising Farius at his right foot. Can't get the paddle down in time. Setting himself up perfectly. Early paddle preparation. You see him come underneath it and just rip that ball down the line. Still still trying to sell it, saying it was out. <laughs> Both Hunter and Yates Johnson. Just, no, no. Well, Silstrom hit an out ball on that one, and rightfully so, calling a timeout. So, Chad, you say rightfully calling that timeout. I agree with you. Silstrom and Farias, great start. 4-0 lead in a minute and 15, a minute and a half. They scored four straight. The Johnson brothers called timeout. Now an 8-0 run from Johnson and Johnson. An 8-0 run here from Johnson and Johnson to go up by a score of 8-4. to What's been the difference maker for both Hunter and Yates? Well, like I, like I said with, with game one, it's almost an identical situation. Farias and Silstrom were being the aggressors. And then they get that early lead and they kind of let off a little bit. And that allows Hunter and Yates to then dictate the pace. They, they were starting to drive more balls. They're moving the ball around and then getting the opportunity to speed the ball up. Farius and, and Silstrom are kind of just, they're almost along for the ride right now just trying to get balls back. They need to take some risk right now and some calculated risk. Got to have an answer here or else it's going to be, that's, that's all she wrote here in game number two. That ball was just out. I don't mind that speed up from, from Farias because that's what he has to do. He, he was catching Hunter on the way forward with his feet still moving. Yates not quite getting underneath that one as much as the previous drives. Wow, that is a grown man drive right there off the paddle of Yates Johnson. And it is match point here for Johnson and Johnson. That flick though from Silstrom is gonna put Yates Johnson on his backside. So I'm just looking at his forearms, right? Because that's where, well, we know as baseball guys, that's where all the power comes through and, and the strength for the, the wrist. Yeah, good angle from Yates. Uh, but, you know, Silstrom's kind of proportionate for the size of his body, but if you match up his forearms to... Joey Farris' ankles, they're kind of the same thickness right there. Oh, it, does it get him or no? No, it's uh, side it's out. Almost, almost got Hunter Johnson as it clipped off the tape, and Joey not happy with the tape, and he lets the tape know. But it is match point number two for Hunter and Yeats Johnson. Oh, oh and Hunter drive. Johnson stepping in with the shake and bake for the winner. 
and the Johnson brothers will move on to the semifinals. 11-6, 11-4. Congratulations to them. The four seed, Andre Silstrom, Joey Farias, will drop down and have some work to do. But it is Johnson and Johnson moving on here at the 2023 APP Daytona Beach Open. Before we even get started here, let's do the Rockin' Protein play of the day. Comes from our last match between Annalie Waters and Salome Davidze. This was an absolutely incredible point here. These ladies had a great battle. Watch this dig from Waters off the tape. Davidze gets it, but Waters Woo! with the cross court winner. And that is your rockin' protein point of the day. Proud ambassador of Original Penguin. Pro athlete, weekend warrior, or everyday active? Stay in the game with Active Tracks, powered by Core Physical Therapy. Core's team of physical therapists and athletic trainers promote injury prevention, rehabilitation, and fast recovery to keep you from being sidelined. We use cutting edge technology to treat the chronic conditions and injuries from high impact, high repetitive activities. Step into an active tracks tent in your community or visit one of our clinics. Core Physical Therapy, treating everyone right. The 2023 APP Daytona Beach Open is sponsored by Consumer Cellular, Power Plate, Gamma, and USA Pickleball. As we take a look back at the turning point of the match here at 4 4, and then Match point there for the Johnson brothers. We're going to throw it down to Dominic Catalano courtside with Hunter and Yates. Back here on championship court, I am with Yates Johnson, Hunter Johnson. Congratulations, guys. Moving on to the semifinals. Playing against Joey Farias and Andre Silstrom. Two guys like to roll that ball, flick that ball nice and hard. But you guys like that pace, too. What's the game plan going in against them? Uh, we're... Main game plan was just use our drives. We're we're driving the ball really well. Um, they got us a couple weeks ago in Punta Gorda, so we kind of knew how to play them and, and kind of the mistakes that we made, and so we kind of changed our game plan. We slowed it down, down at times, but we were aggressive, and I think that's what helped us win the match. And we talked about that match in Punta Gorda that you guys had a couple weeks ago against them. What was the talk you guys had against them when you played them in Punta Gorda? Yeah, we just uh, had to cut down on some mistakes. Um, we kind of gave them too many free points. It's nice that we're under cover right now, no wind, and so that really helped our drives. And, uh, yeah, we just stayed positive, had fun, and we play our best when we do that, so we're really happy. Playing next to your brother, very familiar with each other. What's that like, the dynamic between the two of you playing with each other? And then, again, you guys play against each other in singles. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to have a, a built-in doubles partner. Um, it, it makes it easy. We know where each other are in court. We know how to pick each other up. Um, sometimes we get a little intense with each other, but uh, that's just brotherly love, I think. Um, but yeah, then it's also fun to compete against each other in singles and, you know, let the best man win. You're, you're going down. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we talk about that is that you guys do, you guys have some heated timeouts. But again, it's all in the competitive nature of you two, isn't it? Right, yeah. It, it's, it's not so much, we're not... We're just intense because we want to we wanna win so bad, and, and we just want to get the point across and keep our strategy going. And, uh, yeah, but when we're positive, we have fun, and, and that's the best thing. All right, well, congratulations, boys. Moving on to the semifinals. Next up here, the women's winner bracket final. A shot at the gold medal match.